two projects to review today. The first one is First Churches, the review of the utility intake output visible from the street at 129 Main Street in Northampton, map ID 31B-286. The second one is uh, Real Architects Facade Modifications at 110 Pleasant Street, Northampton, map ID 32C-47. Um, before we get started, I'm going to excuse myself for the second project as I am uh, the president of Funeral Architects. And before we open it up to the first um, project, is there anyone here for public com comment? So we'll start. Can we get to close that door? Yeah. Sure we'll stay open. No. Um, so we'll start with the first project. If you could introduce yourselves and present the project, that would be great. So, I'm Bill Holloway, Chair of the Property Committee at First Churches, and Chuck Widom is a friend of the church and an architect by previous trade. Yes. Um, yeah, so uh, Chuck has some handouts that we're going to talk about the changes we're making and the way we're heating our sanctuary that will require putting some vent pipes on the outside of the church. So I'd like to talk you through the process by which we came up with the design that we have. So Chuck will show some uh, pictures. I've made three copies of what the pictures actually are that could be. So if you could distribute the three to whoever has the copies of the three that we sent out. So our goal is to receive your approval for the design of exterior furnace vent piping in locations B, C, and D on the attached sanctuary basement floor plan, according to the, the descriptions that we provided. The problem we ran into is that the interior linings of our chimneys started deteriorating. And what it meant was, uh, even though the furnaces continued to work, uh, we never would know when they would cease function. So we wanted to try and create complete the project before the heat season began. We also understand that if we stop using the chimneys, they'll then last a lot longer. Because trying to replace the linings and replace the chimneys was not possible. I'm, I'm sorry, trying to replace the lining. Replacing the linings when the people inspected the chimneys said that was not possible to replace the linings inside the chimney. These are the original flues. I'm sorry, I'm kind of going deaf, but I have hearing, aid, hearing aids in, but I'm still, I still have trouble hearing. Okay, I'll speak, I'll speak louder. I have hearing aids too, so I'm sympathetic. <laughs> so our project will install eight high efficiency furnaces that vent directly to the outside through existing basement windows and walls. Four furnaces will be in the front of the church basement and four furnaces will be at the back. Each furnace requires a three inch intake pipe and a three inch exhaust pipe. When we looked at our basement, we found four logical places that we should look at for the placement of these vent pipes. And in the process of doing that, well, in the plan, locations A and B are on the east side of the church. That's pretty much not visible from the street. And it's where the old courthouse side is. Uh, places C and D are on Center Street side and of course are readily visible by the public. Location A was determined by our contractor to be not feasible because the space was occupied by our existing men's restroom and the, the dividing wall behind the restroom contained all the water pipes for the restroom and then on the other side of that was finished recreation room that's used by the men groups that uh, utilize our church. Location B was determined to be feasible, but only if we drilled through the exterior wall. If the window were used, the pitch of the pipes was inappropriate because of the amount of condensate that would be collected and dumped outside and it would create an ice dam, which the contractor said really would not be to our benefit. Now I'd like to show you, step you through the process and involve you with location C and D and then back to B so you see how we came up with the design that we had. So look at page two in your handout. Location C already has a window containing 
the existing vent pipes from two, two boilers that we use to heat the church offices and classrooms. The curved pipes are necessary because the intakes have to be separated from the exhausts. So one's curved upwards and one is curved directly out. Note that the next basement window might be a logical place for us to put the four pipes that would be required. I'm sorry, the eight pipes that would be required for the four furnaces that we're going to install. So if you flip the page, you get an idea what that would have looked like. Well, when we saw this artist's rendition, we said to ourselves, maybe we can do better than that. So look at page three. What we've done here is we've taken all the intake pipes and put them in one window and taking all six exhaust pipes and put them behind a grill in the other window. The first advantage of that is we don't have to have the separation of the exhaust intakes and in the same window so they can be just six straight pipes behind the grill. The intakes can be connected to a chamber behind the grill and not extend out the window at all in this particular way of doing it. Can you just clarify this? Do you see which of those are the intakes and which are the exhausts? So the window on the right has a box that's six intake pipes so connected. That's all yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that's the, what we would recommend for the furnaces that are located at the back of the church basement. But now there's four located at the front that we have to find placement for those vent pipes. So here you see a picture of the window that's there. And if you flip the page, now you look at that window replaced by a grill. So if you look at page five, You see the way the, it was originally. And then page six is the artist's rendition of a louver serving four furnace intake pipes the same way that it served the other intake pipes. Now where can those exhaust pipes go? We felt this window was so close to the sidewalk, no way do we want pipes that close to where the public would be standing. We might end up heating a, the homeless <laughs> in, in ways that would not be good for them. So we move the exhaust pipes to the east side of the church. But because of the, the slope that I meant, difficulties I mentioned before, we actually drill through three feet of exterior wall, and the pipes come out about four feet above the ground. And this is perhaps the more typical installation that you see in most buildings. Because they come out at four feet, we twist them upward another four feet, and the openings now are eight feet above ground level, so it's not presenting a hazard to any people that might be on that side of the church. And for added measure, we're considering putting a security grating around that so that people would not be able to hang things on those pipes or other things like that. So if you'd go back to page one, you'll then notice the green lines showing the piping in the basement and that will be with the new furnaces and the red lines of the existing piping for the two furnaces that are already there. We've made sure that overhead clearance is appropriate to any of the fire exits that are in that basement. And that's what has made this so tricky. Getting the piping done in ways where we don't create a hazard for the people that are using Any questions? The the B location. Um, yeah. So it looks like you're putting a, a grate in front of the pipes. Is that correct? The pipes come out. Is then a support, and this grate is on the front and the side, so that the pipes can't be accessed by someone. Okay. Yeah. So it's more security. It's security and we thought initially appearance, but we realized there's no one on that side to see the pipes 
right. especially from the street because there's this um, uh, buttress. buttress. Yeah, right. uh, that, that's what those two little bumps are in there, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So it, it's cutting off the view of that from the people that would be out front. Is, is there a reason why the exhaust couldn't go out the, the window that's next to it? Uh, we specifically asked that question, and the problem is, is that there is a, the window is lower down, there is a beam that the pipes have to go over, or else they restrict headroom in the basement. By going over the beam, they then pitch down from the beam to the window, and that distance is so great that the condensation has a chance to accumulate and rolls out the end of the pipe and creates a column of ice in the wintertime. So what they do is they want the pitch to be abrupt. And if they did that, it would take up a tremendous amount of room in that area of the recreation room where the window is. The window is on the, in location B, is in the recreation room. But currently it's showing it's storage or it's not. Well, you, the pipes are coming through the wall. The window's on the other side of the wall. Oh, okay. So yeah, the exterior picture, you can't see the location of the wall, but in the drawing, you can see the location of the wall. The window's on the other side of it. The window's in the rec room. It's in the rec room. And the pitch would be such that that's very difficult to do. They would have, they needed the pipes higher, penetrating higher, so that the grade of the pipe wouldn't be as great. And they indicated that was an installation. I'm just curious about the condensation issue you were discussing. You were saying with too steep a pitch, they were concerned about the condensation? Too long of a pitch. Right. So what they want, what, when they looked at the, the way the beams were, they felt that they were going to have a long descending pitch as opposed to a fast pitch of a shorter distance. So with the proposal you are presenting us, you're going through the wall. Those pipes, when they come out of the boiler furnace, whatever it is, furnace, they, do they run horizontally? They go up to the ceiling yeah. and travel through into the space where there normally would be above a drop ceiling. There's one yeah, there yeah, on top of all the beams and then descend down to where they're going to penetrate. What we found is there's limitations as to how many curves they can have. And how far they can go. Well, there's still condensation in those pipes. Yes. Right? Yeah. What happens to that condensation? What we do, if you can picture this, there's no drain in the bottom of the sanctuary of okay. the church. So because they're pitched inward enough to keep the moisture inside, there are sump pumps that collect that. And from the furnace in the front, it pumps it to another sump pump halfway across the basement, it pumps it to another sump pump where the other furnace is, it pumps it to a sump pump in the equipment room and then pumps it down the hall into the only drain at the lowest point in the office building. Well, you know, when I first, I received the, your submission and it didn't, obviously didn't have this detail to it. And um, first of all, I wanted to say, I really admired all the work that's been done to the church over the years. I mean, the restoration work, the pointing, the roof structures, it's, Really incredible the money that you put in to preserve that building and well appreciated by it. And when I first saw this layout, I was in shock that you were going to put those vents back close to the front part of the building where the mm -hmm. sidewall pinches the building. But understanding that there are only the intakes with that louver, louver I don't have an issue with that. No. I'm just curious though, on the view B, the location. I mean, I know it's virtually hidden, but that screening that you're, that grill that you're protecting that with, couldn't you also hide the ends of those pipes? So you it's could. just a, a, a screening? You could. Because, yeah. you know, I even think on the um, C location, um, well, it's not as bad, but it's too bad that you couldn't. I know there's pipes there already. I, I went by the church to look at this. I know you already have those exhaust pipes coming out of that window there by the entrance. But they're, they're kind of sheltered by the sign yeah. that's in front. So I, I let that go. You know? I mean, I, unfortunately, with modern technology and the way things are invented these days, you don't always have the best options. And I realize that. 
we had an option with just two furnaces, but the air handlers were so expensive, it was a $100,000 project. So here, what we've tried to do is to create the kind of compromises that are very difficult for congregations that have these huge old church buildings. We feel very strongly about protecting those buildings because they did. We've got a history there. But you can see the effort that it sometimes takes to have our cake and eat it too. Appreciate it. But it looks like um, you're making an effort to the coloring of this equipment. Are you trying to somewhat match the masonry? Like yeah, we made sure that the plastic for the piping was paintable. Uh, and we'll match the colors as closely as we can. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look now, we didn't paint the inside of the pipe. I, I die every time I see that. Mm -hmm. We make sure we spray the inside. So there isn't a white. Um, have you considered any kind of plantings or other screen that you could maybe put to front to, to also uh, disguise? Well, there's a playoff between creating protective places for homeless people or having stuff out in the open enough so that we're not creating a place for them to stay. And it's a very delicate thing because, frankly, we know many of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we, want, we don't want them to be creating a home because of something that we're doing with planting. Like well, I definitely agree with that on the A and B side in that alleyway between the urban outfits and yours. You know, that tends to be an area that people kind of hide. They do. Ways. Ways. Um, I think if it was feasible, it wouldn't hurt to have a few small bushes in front of the C location. That would be easily done. Yeah. Well, you know, um, without just creating a hazard yeah. with, you know, without blocking too much of the exhaust. Just to be devil's advocate, um, the, the signage and the plantings that are there now were done specifically for the two first two deployments that were put in about eight years ago. Wow. And uh, even without changing what we have for existing uh, landscaping there, uh, already our, the overnight guests have uh, tried to tuck behind that signage and plantings. Really? Yeah. Wow. So uh, uh, there, is a, there is a concern about adding additional landscaping in there for that reason. And uh, having worked on uh, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton a couple of years ago, uh, they, they had some beautiful uh, bushes out front, evergreen bushes. And it was perfect for the, uh, the homeless to tuck themselves in there. And, uh, it's like a second home. We usually so, have from two to six people sleeping in the front and the side. If you drive back this evening, you'll see two people sleeping in the handicap ramp area on the center. Do you know if the church has any negative air problems? So I'm looking at this window here and who knows if you'd want to reglaze it or something like that because I'm thinking carbon monoxide and if there was negative air pressure could potentially build, pull into the building, uh, just a consideration. Yeah. Uh, it's if, fixed. If, if you notice the proximity of the intakes and exhaust in mm -hmm. the window, they're just that far apart, and one is pointed away from the intake. So if the exhausts are on the outside pointed away, it rises up very quickly when you see the exhaust. Oh, okay. So I'm hoping, yeah. Yeah. assuming that it would not be a problem. Yeah. Open. That window doesn't probably open anyway. In the dust, but in the winter time, it's a little bit dry. So when it's being heated, it would be cold. I'm, I'm a contractor and builder. So are these boilers to, like for a hydronic system, like the, the boilers are creating the heat for the air handlers? Because it's, it's high air heat in bucket, right? Well, so the original, the ones in place now are boilers. These are furnaces. Oh, okay. And we avoid then the custom air handler that's necessary for the existing. That was a more expensive system. That because of the custom separate air handler. Yeah, I mean to me, eight furnaces sounds. But the rebate that we're getting is substantially more for that than what we would have done for the boilers. So it's 
enabling us to do it also. And the contractor that we have, we're very pleased with. Uh, it's his imagination that you're seeing in the, the creative design of the yeah. 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 MJ Moran. So is there any further discussion um, with the board as to any of the locations? Any, any concerns about what's been presented? Is there someone that would like to make a motion? I'll move that we approve the plans as presented and say I'm really impressed with how far, how well thought out this all seems to be. We sold it. <laughs> is there anyone that would make a second? I'll say. All in favor? Is it, is it, I'm sorry, we're asking if there's approval with special conditions. And if we make do you it, have any if special what? conditions? If we make it. If you make it. Right. Okay, well, I'm just concerned about, I didn't know if there's any concern about the pipes being able to be maintained in the ground with the ground paint on them so that if the paint wears off or it doesn't hold well um, to the Plastic, is that what it is? Plastic pipe in? PVC. PVC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, the, uh, the, the existing uh, vents for the boilers, they're painted brown. And, and they, they stood up for eight years and they still look fairly well. Oh. Oh. Trust goes a long way. And mm -hmm. I, frankly, I trust. Yeah, I know how much you care about that building. I frankly don't think they let it start to look tattered. That's just my I'm just curious. Yeah, I just didn't you know, know that was, you know, paint holding on yeah. the plastic or. So, are we, can we agree to the original motion? Yes. Okay. So, Bob seconds. Second. All in favor? Okay. Thank you very much. Your Thank you. Thank you. We apparently are getting booted out again. <laughs> Um, but we can go across to Wayne's office because there's a big table there and there doesn't seem to be a huge contingent of public here. So um, we'll move across the hall. <laughs> 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 